Uh, Where are you at now? Because well, you were at your uh, ex-wife's house, man. Sounds like you're in a uh, awful situation, dude. No, it's it. Uh, everybody would think so, but uh, it's not that bad. I um, you know, we're amicable and we're friends, and I got we got two oh, kids. We got two badass kids, and yes. we're we're trying to build up some. Um, she, her her brother has a gym out there um, in Illinois, so I'm trying to grow some roots out there as well. So it's a I scr- okay. it's like a I scratch your back and you scratch mine type of thing. And but she's always she's still always right. <laughs> <laughs> that won't ever change. <laughs> no, a hundred percent. Are you married? Or are you single? Or what's? No, yeah, I'm married. I've been married 15 years. I got three kids. Uh, I just moved my uh, 76 year old mom in with us, so I got six people in this house. That's cool. It's 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 it's, it, sorry, it, it's never quiet. Yeah, I know. It won't it won't last forever though. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I, I'm pretty happy about it. You know, it's it's good for for your kids that you guys are amicable because that's yeah. kind of how my folks were. They divorced when I was real real young. Yeah. But they never went through that bullshit where they just. You know what I mean? Like it just made life awful. They it, they just weren't for each other, and they yeah. were cool to each other. And, mm-hmm. You know, I think that's a healthy thing for kids to see. You know? Yeah, I mean it's it's a different world too. You know what I mean? Like, you know, my my dad's on his third marriage, and you know, he, you know, mm-hmm. I think she's he he's like sixty eight, and she's forty two. So, you know, that wow. show it's modern family type. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like uh, Ed O'Neill. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a tribal type, you know, a tribal type environment that, that our families have, you know, my ex-wife's like a sister to me, you know, really. And, uh, but she lives in Chicago and I'm here right now. I'm in Milwaukee. So I have, uh, two gyms here in Milwaukee and I started, um, jujitsu 08 and started over at the Duke Rufus gym, um, in Milwaukee. That's kind of where everybody you know, really spun off into mixed martial arts, you know, um, and, uh, yeah, just been going since then. I had my stroke in 2017 and, oh, uh, shit. yeah, it was the cause of my cause was uh, a, a dissection of the karate and, um, you know, looking back into, um, after you have the stroke, you start looking back at the, oh, everything makes sense, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So mine was, you know, could have been prevented, um, you know, could, you know, but it is what it is. But, you know, I know, I I don't know if how much, you know, uh, Josh and I have been putting together a, essentially a collaborative of all the people who have had strokes on the mats or, or has some type of correlation to jujitsu at jujitsu. And um, you I, I don't recall. I, I, I have so many people reach out to me, and it's been amazing. Um, I don't rem, I don't recall how you and I got in touch, and I, I I don't recall all of your story, but I do know that yours was caused a little bit different than mine. Mine was a dissection, and that's you know so that's all I know is the dissection. And but there's a lot of well, there's a lot of questions out there from other practitioners about what else could cause these strokes. Well, so <clears throat> yeah, I uh, you know I so I I went through my whole thing, and I'll tell you what what happened because it is a little bit complicated. But and and can I, still, I be, be, before before you complicate it for me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, where did did were you always in Denver training? No, I've moved around a lot. I started in, uh, I, well, I started wrestling when I was four, so that would have been like 1977. <laughs> so uh, I did peewees, and then I, because my parents were married, divorced a lot, I moved around and ended up going, uh, not being able to stay in wrestling, but just did martial arts for a minute. And um, when I was 15, I got cancer. And so I spent about a year and a half beating that. And after I got done with the cancer, I was still in Colorado. I grew up, so I grew up like 10 miles downwind from this thing called Rocky Flats, which is um, where they used to make all the nuclear triggers for 
World War II. Okay. Well, they, if, if you Google American Chernobyl, Rocky Flats pops up. And I grew up 10 miles from there. It's a huge cover-up. It's a like a three-mile island kind of shit show. Anyway, <clears throat> a lot of people end up getting cancer in that area. <clears throat> so I... Uh, that was 1989 when I got diagnosed, and then uh, <clears throat> remember that Bruce Lee movie with uh, Jason Scott Lee came out like in had to be 92 or 91 or something. I got so into like I got getting back healthy from the cancer, and I got <clears throat> excuse me, I got some in my throat, <clears throat> and I got uh, you know as a young man I was like 20 years old. So I was really in my prime and coming back from this illness. And so I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go hardcore martial arts again. And then right then, uh, actually the guy I went with, well, my roommate and I went to um, uh, UFC two in 1994 here in Denver down at Mammoth Gardens. And um, he was a judo. He was a, he actually went to Michigan or his folks were from Michigan and he, he uh, was my roommate in college. And we started, he taught, he turned me out of judo. He kicked my ass. And uh, I was like, oh shit. You know, because I told him it was like in the fucking kung fu dumb mindset back in the early 90s. Like that was a real thing. And he goes, okay, yeah, let's go out in the backyard. And dude, he just tossed my ass around like fucking for an hour. I couldn't do shit. I was so pissed that I'd wasted all that time in martial arts. So, um, I was one of the very first people to do jujitsu in Colorado because we were flying in Pedro Sauer because uh, he was up in Salt Lake. He was the closest guy. And then like Caseca Munez and Ricardo Miguel and we'd fly them in for like camps and shit, but there was no jujitsu back then, you know? Was, uh, was, Zing was, uh, was Zingano there yet? Oh, Kat Zingano? No, no uh, dude, uh, that... Ma uh, Mauricio, her, uh, her husband. Oh, no, I don't think so, dude. And there was nobody here in 94. I mean, I would have known, dude. There was nobody here in 94. 94, 95. And then uh, I was like, I'm waiting in this shit. This is cool. This is what I want to do. And there was none in Colorado. So I moved to uh, California um, and trained with uh, uh, Carly Gracie in San Francisco for a little minute. But it was so fucking expensive. Even back then, dude, Carly was charging 200 bucks a fucking month. Holy shit. And I'm like... Yeah, dude. And I'm, I mean, there was nobody doing this yeah, back then, right. dude, in 96, you know? And then, um, and then fucking Half Gracie opened his gym down in the mission and I went there for like six months, but it was cool because Half was never there, but I got to work out with uh, Kurt Osiander way, way back, you know? And then, um, what, you know, he, what, what, he, was, he must have been what, like a uh, purple belt or No, dude. I'd never fucking, I, I was the guy who, no, 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 uh, Kurt, Kurt. Kurt. And, Kurt. Kurt was. Oh, Kurt? Yeah. I, fuck, I don't know. He was probably... Man, I want to... So this would have been fucking... Uh, 95. 90... No, this would have been probably... Because I was at Carly's until probably 97. So this is... I think Alf didn't open his gym until 98. Now, I could totally be wrong because right. that's a long time ago. But uh, um, it, I remember because I was so fucking excited it was in the Mission. Yeah. The Mission District, which is like South uh, San Francisco. <clears throat> anyway, okay, so... Long story short about the dissection for me, um, you know, I've been in the fucking grappling scene for, for like literally in the United States since it, the, this modern inception along with the UFC that's driven in the interest, right? Like, I mean, I was right at the beginning of that. And so, um, you know, I've had this interesting path through grappling. I never was, I'm more of an anarchist. I don't really buy into belt systems and shit. And always more with thought like a wrestler, like, I don't give a fuck what belt you can do. Like, you know, what can you do on the mat? Like, I mean, that's what we're here for. You know what I mean? So it's just why I'm telling you why I never really stuck with a belt system, but I stuck with grappling. You know, I did. I've done grappling for fucking ever. And um, so I, I tour now and I give seminars and courses and shit like BJJ Fanatics just released a DVD, a two DVD set of mine. Um, so I was over in the UK, dude. Okay, so this is this is how it all starts. Like every year I go to the UK for the last 10 years and do a tour of the UK. <clears throat> I fly into Manchester and I fly out of London, right? Manchester's at the top, London's at the bottom. And I usually take about, it's like 15 days or something to do that whole thing. For two weekends, I do two camps and then shit ton of seminars in between. So 
<clears throat> I'm heading out there. And I'm going with my assistant, a guy named Sam Cresson. I don't know if you know, he's a Chris Howder, black belt. He's like a third degree. So we're going out to, to, to uh, the UK to do this tour. The flight is like fucking 10 hours long. You know, it's like 12, 14 by the time I'm from Colorado to Florida and I'm from Florida to Manchester. So I'm just in there and I get out. I'm jet lagged. Me and Sam go to the fucking hotel where we got booked and I crash because I'm jet lagged. Dude, I wake up the next fucking morning and my left arm is literally twice the size of my right arm. Okay. And I'm like, fuck man, I got to work for two weeks. I can't, I mean, I'm just going to work through this. So, um, I do the two camps, which is, you know, three days, six hours. So that's 18 hours of fucking grinding with these guys and all that. And it's fucking huge. It looks retarded, dude. Literally, I'm walking when I walk around London because I, I always wear like a fucking Peaky Blinders hat, you know, like <laughs> one of these. And uh, they were like, "You look like Popeye and shit," because my arm was uh-huh. so fucking like crazy, right? But I'm like, ah, whatever. Long story short, I get I fly back home, and it's everybody's telling me, "Oh, it's just an edema. It's just an edema. It'll go down in like a couple days." And I thought it wasn't going down because I was constantly working, right? I never was given it a chance to heal. I got home and I waited like three days and nothing happened. It was getting worse. It was getting like, and the skin was stretching. It was like hurting, like a rug burn, you know, like an Indian burn because the skin was stretching. You, you, what, what, you must have thought that you had an infection. I had no idea, dude, because I had, I had no loss of function. I had no pain other than the stretching. It just looked fucking stupid, you know, like. I didn't, I mean, so anyway, I, uh, I get home, it's not going down. So I go to the fucking, like the the emergency clinic and the strip mall, you know, those little fucking places. And they look at me and they go, no, you need to go to the emergency room. We don't see fucking blood clots here. Oh. And I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> I had a blood clot in my fucking left shoulder for two fucking weeks. And I did two wrestling camps two fucking uh, uh, clinics and a seminar. Plus I walked like seven miles touring around the city of York and another five miles around the city of London before I flew back. So dude, so I'm like, fuck, I didn't realize that I was in a big fucking mess. Right. And now I'm in the emergency room. They're making a big to do. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. And you know, I felt fine. So they take me to the fucking, um, ultrasound chick, right? Because they want to get an ultrasound and see where the fucking clot is and what's going on with my arm. And she is freaking out. She's like, I've never seen a clot like this. It's from your whole fucking wrist all the way to your shoulder. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like your bedside manner is freaking me out. I was totally cool before, you know? <laughs> anyway, so she gets up here. She goes into my fucking carotid. She's like, your fucking carotid is completely closed. And I'm like, what? You know? And so... Okay, so that's how I find out. Now, I spent four days in the fucking hospital on um, uh, heparin, which is a blood thinner, right? And, dude, I mean, I'm not really a religious person, but there's got to be some fucking magic or miracles or whatever the fuck your uh, thing is because I walked out of that hospital. My arm went back to normal. Like, normally they'd have to send, like, a fucking roto-rooter down your veins and shit. Like, I didn't want any part of that, you know? They fucking... uh, Anyway, long story short, I, I leave the fucking place and I'm fine. I have to stay on blood thinners for a minute because they're trying to figure what, what I got to do here. But and I may be on blood thinners for the rest of my life. But this is where the fucking uh, the stroke and the, and the dissection came to me. I had never been to a fucking vascular specialist ever in my life. Like, you know, some, a doctor that specializes in veins and all that shit. This dude, <clears throat> he looks at me and he's like, and he, you know, he's talking about the army. He's like, yeah, but your neck is a whole different thing. That's been like that for probably 10 years. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, you've been operating on half a carotid for 10 years. Now, 10 years ago is when I fucking had to tie it. Dude, I've had so, so many cervical problems. So many doctors tell me not to fucking re- grapple anymore because, you know, the natural wear and tear <clears throat> on discs. You know this, right? Like it's fucking it happens to everybody. But I kept wrestling anyway. I didn't give a fuck. I didn't retire 
until I couldn't use my fucking right arm. And that was 10 years ago. And the fucking left carotid controls the left brain yeah, and controls the right, right arm. Right. So that's what, like the doctor goes, yeah, this thing's been closed for 10 years. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, uh, can you think back? I've been married to my wife 15. She's in the fucking room. I go, she goes, can you think back about 10 years ago? Did you stop losing fucking control of your right arm? And me and my wife fucking look at each other like, yeah. And then he's like, did you start having like, um, like a veil pulled over your eyes and like these migraine headaches that were like blinding, like you couldn't see. And we look at each other and we're like, yeah. I mean, all, you know, the whole checklist of fucking shit, right? I was dropping stuff out of his hand all the time. I had no idea what's fucking going on for 10 years, dude. Yeah. Until this other issue told me about this. And then, so I'm just Googling all this and trying to figure out what is going on with my life, why I have to take these blood thinners. And I stumble on your fucking, what, what was it? What was it like medium or what was that article? Yeah. yeah. There's like yeah. five dude, of them. Dude, I am five. so fucking grateful for you find, uh, writing that because yes. when I saw that and I had all the other pieces, I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. 100% because the doctor was like, you had a stroke, you had yeah. a carotid dissection. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? What would that happen from? Like, <laughs> you know? Grappling. Grappling. Fucking grappling. I, dude, I've been <laughs> choked so many fucking times in my goddamn life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know. It's crazy. Is it? And don't you feel stupid when you like figure you put all the shit together? Well, like, oh, no, my God. I, 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 here, here's, here's why I don't. Um, when when you talk to any of these jiu-jitsu coaches they they you know they really didn't know that this can happen and they think that you just go to sleep and you know that's really the worst that can happen and that's kind of my mentality and um you know i never thought about any type of damage you know i'm not a i'm not a medical student i didn't even know what carotids or you know i mean i you hear like carotids because they're telling you like it's a carotid choke and the yeah, it's a blood are... choke and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but you don't think like you don't think anything of it, and you just continue to go. You know, life goes on, and now, you know, it's just like you said. It's like I mean, you had it happen to you. You were medically diagnosed with it, and you still didn't know like how. I how didn't know what it even came happen? from. Yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, Dude, no, like, I'm so happy you did this. And I did see in that group that, like, you're collecting data. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, because I know there's that one medical art journal article yes. only, right? Like, and, and so that gentleman, I've spoken to him. Um, he, uh, um, his name is William. And he, he was on steroids. And, okay. and, um, that's the main journal article that I found right away. Um, so when every, everybody's sitting in Reddit and stuff like that, talking about these strokes they are like, ah, it's just for people who are on roids, 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 because they're just going and Googling it. And that's the only article that they find. But anyways, um, he, yeah, he said, I mean, so, you know, that's, you know, it's just a, a interesting situation. But then after I started doing my blogs, because I was just so like felt like the whole world was taken out from underneath me. I felt bes betrayed by, you know, my sport. Not in a more of just like a I felt like a lost soul. And um, Got it. Hey. Yep, yep. Yep. Cool. So, anyways, like I was saying, like after it happened to me, I just kind of felt like a lost soul, and um, you know, I, I started. How did you find out though? Like, like what was it where you're like? I mean, did, did you know stroke symptoms before? Because I never fucking knew no, that shit. No, I didn't. So here, so what happened? To, if you if you look at my incident, so mine the. I call it the icing on the cake was I was in a north south choke and um in practice and you know I was trying to fight out of it you know waiting for him to adjust like was hoping he'd give up on the choke type of thing and um 
you know, typically that wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, um, but what I didn't know at that time is that I had a clot sitting on my carotid artery because it had been torn, you know, previous weeks prior to this. So just like you walking around, like I was walking around with a, a torn carotid with a big, you huge, fucking know. yeah, but, but, and here's, here were my symptoms looking back. One day after practice was sitting, talking to one of my uh, teammates, mentioned to him that I had right side blurry vision, you know, thought it was really weird, thought it was abnormal, still decided to drive home. Like, like it was almost like I had like 25 beers with that, right? Like driving home like this, like with one eye, like type of thing. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah. you know, went home, slept that off, you know, kept, you know, kept training, kept training for weeks. Um, and then the week of that, that the stroke, um, I was, you know, just, it was like I had a sore throat on, but it was only on the left side of my mouth and jaw. So it wasn't, the whole, it wasn't the whole thing. And I felt like I was under the weather, like I had allergies, you know, so just not feeling well, but not sick where I can't get on the mat and train with my buddies. So Friday afternoon, it was a Mark Lehman class and you just don't miss the Mark Lehman classes because that's when all the brown belts, purple belts, blue belts, all the competitive people come and we train hard and you don't want to miss that. Um, and that was just the day. Like even my, my buddies were like, yeah, man, you just, you weren't, you weren't, fe I wasn't feeling like myself even on the mats, but I kept pushing through it. Like I was gassed. I wasn't moving good. I was just out of it, man. I shouldn't have been training, but I just, I kept training. And the next thing you know, Mark was like, okay, Chris, uh, who wants to roll again? And everybody, you know, I got to raise my hand just like everybody else, you know, peer pressure. But again, again, I have no idea that this could happen. So why not, you know, get my ass kicked because of exhaustion? Fine. Um, you know, you, 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 you learn from your loss type of thing, you know, just get out there and yeah. move. That's why I tell people, but like, just go out there and move. You know, even if you get your ass kicked because you're tired, you're going to you're gonna find something. And I always was that guy that it's like I always made sure to roll that last one that I – like when I thought I was done, somebody would be like, hey, you want to roll run more? And I was kind of done in my head, but I'd be like, no, I'll, I'll do it. Because I always yeah. found that whenever I did that roll is when I found something out in my game and like a light bulb went off. So I always you know, looked for one of those rolls. But yeah, Mark said, it's time to roll again. I'm like, oh, fuck. And he goes, all right, Chris, you'll go with Rob. I'm like, oh, shit, Rob again. And uh, Rob put me in, um, you know, north-south. It shot the clot to the brain. It was an instant, instant stroke, wow. instant paralysis, instant like, ooh, you can't talk. You're like brain dead. You, yeah, so... You know, at, you know, that was like a pretty now, were you were you also <clears throat> were you kinda of out of it or do you have no, recollection I, of that? I remember everything. I remember okay. everything. I remember I remember the bedside, I remember you know, the ambulance. I because you're think the whole time you're thinking about shit. You're thinking about your life insurance, your disability policy, your kids. I you're 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 right. you're, you're questioning what the fuck you're doing, why this is not supposed to happen. Like I remember, they were pulling me out of the gym. I'm looking at the the sign of the name of Nova Gyms on on the building, saying, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "This is." I'm like thinking to myself, "I'm like, this is how it's ending right now." I'm like, "This yeah, is yeah. just not. Yeah. This wow. is not the story." And yeah, you're thinking about your kids and your family the whole time, and people are trying to ask you questions, but you can't. You, you nothing's coming out. It's just like, Ugh. you know what I mean? Like. Wow. I'm, I'm scared now to ever be by myself because if I go down, man, it's like, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I, you're, are, you, are you on blood thinners too? Then? No, uh -uh. they, they told me that, um, they are like, man, you don't have, like they found right away at the medical college. They, the, they are like right away. They're like, it was the dissection, you know, it formed a clot. We, sh we busted the clot out with the TPA. And then we we stinted up your neck, and um, and they did put me on blood thinners and uh, aspirin right away for about yeah. I want to say s four months. And when I went back, they took me off the blood thinners because they said 
you know, going into it, I, I didn't have any high blood pressure, high cholesterol or anything like that. So they, 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 they said it's just you had a, a, a carotid dissection. And when I went back for follow up, it all sounded good, all healed up. Um, I had uh, after a year within the year after I had one day after training where I just felt under the weather and I was scared again. So I went into the ER. I didn't have any signs. I didn't have any symptoms or anything like that. But they did the. Yeah, full- bad vibe. What's that? I had a bad vibe, and I, and I went in. Yeah. I went in. This is a year. This is like 2018, like mid year after my stroke, and they did the whole ultras and everything, and and. Um, and they're like, nah, everything looks good. So, I mean, I've been on the mat since, you know, just very hyper aware of, you know, anything. Um, I I don't let people, you know, rank on my neck anymore. Like, you know, I let people, like if I'm going to roll with like some type of like, you know, high level grappler who likes to grab heads and throw people around with their you heads, I'm just going to let, like, yo, dude, I know it's your game, but, you know. We gotta kind of. Like, I have a, I have a training par, uh, partner. His name it, his name is Hank the Crank. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting neck cranked. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you roll with Hank, he's gonna grab your neck. He's gonna control you, and he's gonna finish that neck crank from pretty much any position. Um, and uh, anyways, but he he knows of my condition, and every like I feel him. He'll get his. He'll still get his chin straps on me. But he's not, you know, ripping me around like, you know, he could. So, I mean, that's just, you know, training with my, you know, my partners um, who respect me. I, you know, respect who I am now. Um, I don't even want to, like, you know, I'm sh- like, there's, there's, there's one guy. There's one guy who um, we did an interview and he's in, um, he was brought one of Braulio's guys and he's in, the UK, um, and he's had a number of strokes. His was not from dissections, but um, some something coming from the heart, and he's got like some rare genetic disease. Um, and uh, you know, he, like he's still like active, active competitor, like training, like IBJJ competition is life. You know what I mean? And that's you know, yeah. hey. You know, he, he's like the doctors told him, like, you'll never grapple again. And like whatever they whatever they said to like that, like drove him like to like a whole other level. I'm not like that. Like, I, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm at a point where it's I'm 42. I don't I, this is not my career. It is a big part of my life. And I do want to continue to do this. And I do want to pass on the knowledge to the, the you know, the younger generations. But right now. Just like you and I are identified in this conversation, like there's a real laugh, lack of awareness. And because of that, that's the danger in the sport. The sport, I believe, can be safe. It's not 100% dangerous. But Oh, dude, I, you're right. I mean, I think it's actually 100% can be safe. The thing you have to tell these guys, it's like fucking – so you know, I've been doing fucking leg locks forever, right? And because of that – I know you fucking tap the second you get somebody gets you because you'll fuck your knee up bad. Well, it's just got to the, – the throat's got to have the same fucking respect. Yeah. That you just – you don't fuck with it. That these are legit problems that experienced grapplers have fucking happened to them. So you should learn from their fucking fuck-ups yeah. if you don't want to end up like dead – Right. Or, or fucking paralyzed or some shit, you know, because it's it's a real fucking thing. Like, it is. But you can still, I can still roll with leg locks and shit. Now, yep. I'm like you, like, <clears throat> when I stopped losing control of my right hand, that's when I hung up my boots. I was done. I was like, okay, I mean, I can't fucking wrestle. And I had a, dude, I was in a gym with, um, I had a gym, it was me and Brandon Ruiz, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's just fucking incredible. He's a Machado, I think, second or third degree black belt, you know, Greco-Roman All-American, just a total stud. And we had, like, a fucking incredible gym, and I just had to walk away from it. And I didn't know, dude. And I'll tell you, it was like, you know, giving up actual active rolling was, like, fucking depressing, dude. It was depressing as fuck. Because you don't know, you don't realize 
how much of your fucking identity and how much of like your problem solving and how much of your stress relief and how much of your fucking basic just movement and exercise come from that from it because it's not exercise it's not hard it's like fun right you know dude the second i stopped man i it was like my body just like it felt like it got riddled with fucking uh with arthritis dude i couldn't move anymore i was like oh shit what the fuck's happening to me and then that made me not exercise more and it just got worse and worse until i figured out man i just got to do yoga i got to do some sort of fucking movement otherwise i'm gonna be really fucked <laughs> You know, I'm going to be one of these pill cases that's just on pain pills all the time and stuff. And, you know, yoga is magic that way. But it's funny because now I've picked up two fucking causes. One is your cause that, I mean, dude, like seriously, I cannot thank you enough for writing that article. <laughs> I mean, dude, it it made so much make sense to me. But um, uh, the second cause um, has to do with fucking... You know, so we go into the hospital and these doctors, you know, like, I'm not a big fan of doctors. I mean, I think in the United States, trauma doctors are an amazing. You, If you're going to have trauma, you want to be in the United States. But like everything else, like you get people in, uh, you know, like healthy people are getting MRSA and shit in the hospital. It's like a mess, right? Like medical error and all that. So I try to stay away from them. So um, we, we were in there and, you know, they're trying to give me all these reasons why, like, this could happen because we didn't think about the fucking, these weren't wrestlers or, or fucking jujitsu guys. They did. They're fucking nerdy MDs. What the main vascular guy was like 70. Yeah. He has no fucking clue. Right. And they're like, Oh, cause you had cancer, you know, 30 fucking years ago and all this other shit. And I'm like, they're freaking me out. And my wife, who's very smart. She like, she's like, no, this isn't right. And she's as skeptical as I am. She goes and looks it up. She comes back. She changes the minds of the fucking two doctors, too. But uh, there's this article out there, uh, another article, dude, like your article. But this one was on um, – it said, uh, why are so many pro athletes getting blood clots? And bullet point number one is being on an international flight. That's exactly what I did, dude. I was on an international fucking flight. That's number one. Number two, creating fucking supplementation. It, that was like bullet point one, bullet point two. And I'm like, fuck, that's me. Because I've been on creatine forever. fucking forever, dude, <laughs> forever. Because of the, it, it just lets you recover so quick, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I don't do creatine, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing like twice a week. I do creatine, I'm like four times a week. You know, it's like that kind of difference. Anyway, long story short. So now I'm like telling everybody in grappling about carotid dissections. And, and then I'm telling anybody in fitness in general – Fucking get off the creatine, especially if you're going to fucking be on a long flight, man. Because, I yeah, mean, Venus Williams had that. Like, all kinds of athletes are having that. And you know what's interesting? Um, there's an article that I did on Medium also, uh, named, a guy named Jay. Um, and I interviewed Jay, and his stroke came right after uh, a, a flight as well. There's some there. That happened to my mom. My yeah. mom did, uh, flew and then had a fucking stroke. Interesting. So, I mean, all we can do is what you're doing, dude. Yeah, That's dude. just taking data points and fucking trying to let other people know. And they might have a fucking piece of the puzzle right. that we didn't know. You 100%. Know? And, and that's why I started this whole, you know, whatever you want to call it, movement or just I just call it, you know, educational awareness is just, just like you said, Yeah. it's just like here, let me just give you the information that I can gather from. And it's fun because I'm talking to cool, like minded people about jujitsu anyway. So it's like, to me, yeah. it's not, it's not <laughs> hard to do, you know what I mean? It's not right. like, I'm, it's not like I'm in some geriatric, you know, unit, you know, talking to, you know, stroke survivors of, you know, who, you know, you know, the deal. So it's just a different thing. It's very interesting. I also know that the doctors and just like you said, the ER, um, there is a, also a general lack of awareness uh, with that. And so a lot of young Yeah, people, that should be like on a checklist when they're going through. Like, you know, like you got a karate. Did you do jujitsu or wrestling or anything like that? Well, it's not only – it's not only it, – it, well, here's what I – here's the scarier thing is that they're, they're not even – they're not even really finding the dissections – 
um, a lot of people are missing it and calling it um, like somebody will go to the ER and they'll say it must be some vertigo or dehydration or whatever it is and they're not doing the right scans because you're not going to pick up the clots on the scans unless they do a contrast scan. So a lot of these MRIs, if you do an MRI without contrast, they're not going to find any clots. So or, or, or any type of, uh, uh, I should say, any type of tears. So then they're sending these people home, and then they're coming back later on, and then they're getting the contrast done. They're like, oh, yeah, you did have a, um, a, di a, a, a clot. You had a dissection. And, and then they're – now, now let me ask you something. Yeah. Is, your, is your carotid open or closed? It's open with a stint inside oh, of it. That's that. awesome. Yeah. It That's is. awesome. So, and it's healed. You don't have any hardware or anything in there. I have a stint inside of it. Yeah, there's a stint. Oh, you have a stint. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's about six inches. And they said that the reason they had to put it in is because even after they shot the TPA to bust open the clot, there was it was this clot was so big that there was still a clot sitting on the carotid artery. So they stinted it just to make sure that there wasn't another stroke. Yeah. See, I'm fucked, dude. This guy just yeah. still collapsed, like, because it's so old. Yeah, you got to want to go in and mess with it. Well, you, you, you're right, and that's you know, if you look at, uh, God, who was? Let me, let me just find this, this name real quick. There was a gentleman who passed away. Do you remember the beat, the uh, the underground? Oh fuck yeah, dude! I used to have. I had to I had to catch wrestling for him on there. That was mine. Like uh, Kirk wanted me in charge of that. So this was years ago. This is like around two thousand. I I know the underground. I haven't been on in years, but I used to know it real well. So, what do you remember the guy's um, the guy's name that founded that? Uh, like un like MMA TV the the underground. Um, uh, hold on, I'll tell you right now. Uh, David Jacobs. Oh no, we must be thinking of somebody else, or I'm thinking of somebody else. What, what kind of underground is this? Like a no, is it, it an internet thing, or is this like a fucking fight thing, or what? No, no, no. it was the uh, the the MMA underground or whatever it was was just like a, a forum, just like you said. Yeah, MMA TV, and then they had the yeah. underground. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So David the Rock Jacobs um, was. Uh, I, my understanding was he was like one of the editor guru or something like that. But anyways, okay. um, he, uh, too many years of chokes uh, caused uh, scarring in his artery in his neck. And after some time, left the artery narrow and, and prone to clotting. And he passed away in his home. So... <laughs> That was a while ago, man. I, I I can I'll send you the info because I have it on my spreadsheet too. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you that. I'll send you that. But there's a lot of there's a lot of I mean, there's another one. Um, there's a uh, a story. Uh, there's a couple more of like closed carotid arteries, like kind of like yours. I got. I just have to dig through like the. 5,000 pages of notes and inboxes and messages that I have these days with it. But I mean, there's a lot, bro. And that's why we're, that's. David Jacobs. Un moment, por favor. Hey dude, sorry. That's okay. My computer, my connection. No problem. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, long story short, um, 
Yeah, there there was a couple other people who had like a narrowing of their carotids, and I have to go through my notes and figure out who those people were. But I'll I'll send that to you. But then also my friend Carolyn, she's New Orleans. She's the in New Orleans. She is the first female black belt. Um, and oh, cool. she, she's been rolling for twenty some years. She started when she was eighteen. I think she's like thirty eight now or something like that. Whatever. And uh, she had a stroke. She had multiple strokes, and the the, the doctors said that it was her uh, carotid arteries had had so much damage from the last twenty years of grappling. So I mean, that's that's probably my biggest concern with a lot of people. You know what I mean? Not just you know, mine happened in two thousand seventeen. So that was what like nine years into grappling, but that was. That was a good nine years of like hardcore strangling. You know what I mean? Right. Like it wasn't right. just once. It wasn't like once in a in a while in the garage with my buddy. It was like with all the yeah, sa- like all the savage three times a week. Two two to three times a week with every savage there is. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, man. I I the, you know the reason I was so excited to find your article. <clears throat> and then start to hear these, uh, and then it just everything made sense. Is that you know I was talking about that kind of depression that you get when you, in the, when you have to quit or whatever. Yeah. And like, dude, I mean, it was really fucking debilitating. Like, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's hard to explain to somebody who's never really had to deal with that. And I think every athlete comes to an age where they have to give their shit up. But you know, it's like it was difficult for me and. To have the knowledge and have the information has made it a fuck ton easier because I'm not like totally in in the dark as to what the fuck happened. I know, you know what I mean? Because it's this, it's also scary, like you said, you know. Because then you get like the paranoia in your fucking head about it, and it's it's <laughs> I know. way easier when you have knowledge. I know. Well, it is. It is. It's, it's imperative too. You know what I mean? Knowledge. So once you have knowledge, then you can have a plan. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I'm already thinking like I'm already, I'm thinking ahead in so many different things as it comes to you know I do want to live, you know, like having you know networks of people to you know now we have technology. So if I want to work out at home, you know, there's people that I can be like, yo, can you watch me work out right now? Because or just sit, you know, I'm just gonna hit this Zoom right now. So if I go down. You know, you you can send the ambulance over because you only have so many so much time, you know, for your life to be saved. You know what I mean? And but you know, having the general awareness, like you said, you know, for you, you know, you've been there. Now you kind of know. You know what to, to look for. You know what makes sense and what doesn't make sense on your body. Right. And that's that's right. how it is for me too. And it's like even with training or or even day to day, it's like oh my my body, I don't feel good. Caution caution you know what i mean it's like step back reevaluate what are we doing today what has to be you know maybe i don't work you know maybe i do sleep you know maybe i do go to the doctor or you know we we alpha males have to come to the current terms that you know things can happen and you know the statistics are oh it's so fucking humbling dude it's like pulls the rug right out from under you do when you're laying in that hospital bed and like you know like what the fuck i could die like what <laughs> crazy and uh the sad thing is you know we're we're st- i mean even me like still um <laughs> you know I'm, i still you know there, i still push myself you know a little bit too far at times you know what i mean and yeah. uh, but it, 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 like I, I have awareness i know what to look for um and i know you know when i need to you know really focus on my myself and my health um, and when I, you know, can, you know, go on the mats or go and do CrossFit or whatever it is that I'm doing, you know what I mean? I've been doing a lot, a lot of yoga too. I, I actually, um, that's, that's, that's been a game changer just with like the inflammation and, you know, well, dude, I think, I think honestly, that's what saved my life oh, I uh, bet. because I mean, everybody all the way from that fucking chick doing my, my arm, uh, with the ultrasound to the head of the vascular unit. They were freaked out. They're like, there is no way you should be alive. <laughs> like, you should be dead. 
you literally have had this for fucking two weeks and didn't do, and you were working out and doing That's all this insane. shit. You should literally be dead. And so, like, I don't know. You know, it's it's such a fucking. It's real humbling, dude. Like when you're laying there and you're like, "Holy shit, dude, this is serious." Like, wow. Um, but you know, like for me, the problem is, is <clears throat> I mean, I'm just so addicted to this whole grappling game. Like, <laughs> it's just the greatest thing ever, you know. So. Uh, for me, it's it's been great to be able to. I've had to transition almost completely over to coaching. You know, like I just can't even fucking really wrestle because I do have the closed one on the left side, and I can't fuck around. I like you know because you only get two carotids and I only have one. Yeah. So I'm already pushing it. So I'm, I'm just like you know because I got three kids and they're not even my oldest is 13. Like I got to be around for a minute, you know, to help yeah, them. I do so, know. Uh, my my <laughs> so, my oldest is 13 is also 13 and 10. So ah, nice, nice. Yeah, so you feel me, man. Dude, like, you know, that's that's all I was thinking about. In that am- ambulance is those damn kids. I'm like, man. I'm like, I was thinking about the life insurance policy, but then I started thinking, I'm like, man. I'm like, that ain't gonna do them shit. I'm like, I need to be here. And then all of a sudden, like, again, I didn't know what was happening, what was happening to me, but like my adrenaline was like. <sighs> like I was like trying to like fix myself with like just adrenaline. I was doing deep breathing, trying to calm myself down. Like you're just on a well, see, That's what saved me in the yoga was I think the, like the training I've been doing with breathing and yeah. stuff. I want to think that's what kept me going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause what's fucked up is now see, I, I was like that. depressed and shit too, because, um, you know, I, I, I would lose feeling in my arm. But I also have damage to my C2. So, you know, that goes out into the right arm too. And I would get stingers. But they were two different fucking things. And I didn't even know that. And then, like, I would get crazy lightheaded. Which makes sense when you only have one fucking carotid. But I didn't know that, you know. And as, like, a cancer survivor, I'm automatically paranoid. Like, oh, I got a brain tumor or something. My arm's not working and I pass out all the time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just don't know what the fuck's going on. So you're stressed out about shit that doesn't even exist. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's something serious going on that you should fucking know about so you can make sure you don't die. You know, like just knowing the information is like so crucial. Huge. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks. I, I appreciate you taking the time because this, this is going to be a really good, I got a lot of good stuff out of here that I want some other people to hear, some other coaches to hear. Um, I'm putting together a, a campaign. Like I said, I'm, we're gonna Dude, be- you should broaden it to grappling, man. Because I swear to God, this sh- I did, I did like, I did a fair amount of with the gi, but like, I mean, like eighty percent of my shit's no gi, and it happens. Uh, dude, I, neck cranks and fucking and chokes happen just as much without the fucking gi. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, exactly. I mean, it, it's 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 almost like, um, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Like any type of neck neck. Uh, manipulation whether it's somebody cranking with a, a guillotine or a, you know if you look at our if you look at our um our our uh, cases there's i mean a lot of hard guillotines you know you know any any of anything neck cranking there there's even just cross facing you know what i mean so like grabbing the head and like you know ripping the head around with a with a um Chin strap. Uh, chin strap and shit like that like man i so i you know i tr- i try not to do we have judo at our place but i and i tr- cool. but i try not to do too much judo because there's a lot of yanking on the on the gi yeah on the gi on the, against the throat and stuff yeah against the neck. so right so yeah i i just have really adapted my game like to just be hyper aware of, you know, the carotids and the vertebrals. And whenever I feel that gi getting tight around my neck or, you know, somebody, you know, getting that head, it's just, I have to react. You know what I mean? Um, Yeah. Holding, you know, holding and reacting, you know what I mean? And just, you know, fight. It's like fight for your life first in my neck and then, you know, react. Well, and check. also, you know, tap so you can wrestle again another day. Well, I mean, your story is, 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 you know, I mean, tells kind of the tale though of, you know, from a long-term perspective, I do have a lot of people saying, Hey, I want to do this a long time. And my guess is if we could rewind your journey, um, 
probably, if we were able to mitigate the number and uh, you know severity of the chokes and the damage on your neck, that carotid artery might not be closed. Oh, I I'm almost sure it wouldn't have collapsed. I'm I know it collapsed from trauma, dude. Because I know on so so this last year I've been doing all I've been and it's like kind of cosmic that it's all happening the same year. So I find out about my neck, but on the same side of my face. I don't know if you've ever done rolfing. Have you ever done rolfing? Do you know yes, what that is? I do. Yeah. It's like, it's like uh, the pressure. Do, but I, do they do the traditional one with you where like they take their pinky and jam it in your fucking nose? No. So <laughs> like in the, like the old school rolfing, there's like 10 sessions or something that you're supposed to do and you can repeat them as many times as you want, but it's a progressive kind of thing that strains your body from feet to head. Right. Anyway, at the end of it, they do this thing and there's these like, nasal flaps inside your nose and like if you ever go to the you see those carnies and they take a fucking 10 penny nail and then tap it into their fucking face it goes straight in yeah it pierces it pierces like a membrane right that's how it goes straight back because you got nasal cavities and that's the how that works right that's why you don't die <laughs> well on this side the same fucking side as my carotids fucked that flaps completely crushed and then but because she's a rolfer she's a little more into asking like a lot of questions because it takes like an hour to get the session done. It's like a chiropractic massage, a whole yeah. thing, right? And uh, she's like, did you take a lot of trauma to the face? And I'm like, yeah, fucking cross faces all the time, which, you know, a right-handed person would be crushing you like constantly, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, these are just the fucking weird things that you learn about your body as you get older too, you know, yeah. like you start piecing together all the bullshit. Well, that's, that's it, <laughs> How man. connected. So maybe old guys like us can, you know, spread their word to the 12, 13, 15 year olds that are someday going to be 20s and 30s. And, you know, yeah. the, the sport's growing so fast. And um, it's, it's like you said, you know, there's there's got to be a way, you know, from a safety standpoint, you know, just to keep people's, you know, carotid arteries so they don't close up. I mean, that's a huge danger. And... Well, you know, it's funny because in catch wrestling, um, you know, it's been around for like a hundred years. There's been a whole bunch of, and just like how jiu-jitsu, like different tournaments and different competitions have different uh, rules. And they started banning the strangle, uh, you know, about halfway through, right? During the, like the golden age of, of catch at the turn of the last century, they started banning the strangle. And, you know, I'm sure stuff like this might have been why they just didn't know what it was, but they probably knew like, fuck, I wasn't right after that fucking strangle right. or whatever you know dude i'm i'm sure there's so many stories out there that just haven't made it i mean if you think about it too like my story is only i wouldn't in, know dude if you had to put that on i would not fucking have a clue right still and and like i said we've got on our on our database we've got like over like one two three all the way to 100 like name injury belt rank when it happened you know grappling gi no gi chokehold uh, date of birth, where it happened, were you training with somebody's bigger, smaller? Can you remember, you know, all those different questions. Um, but here's the thing. It's like, you're right. Like I, I can narrow, narrow this down for the sport and, and find all these, but I mean, it, it also happens outside of the sport. It happens to people playing golf. It happens to somebody bowling. It, I mean, anything like, have you been watching the bulls, um, uh, last dance at all that the the documentary they have on um, but it, it's about the the bull the Chicago Bulls like Michael okay. Jordan those but anyways on that documentary they one of the episodes they they swing back to Scottie Pippen and how he had a, a, a one of his bad games he like blurry vision migraine headaches like just wasn't feeling himself. And that's a perfect example of somebody who was probably either having a dissection or some type of mini stroke. Nobody... Right, a mini stroke. That's what I think I had. I don't think I had a full stroke. I think I had a mini stroke. And those ha those happen a lot. I mean, the, the the scary thing about the mini strokes is that if you don't catch those, um, and you just keep going, then chances are like a big stroke could happen later on, and that's that's where you got to be careful. You know yeah. what I mean? And you know. Um, a lot of athletes, a lot of young people are gonna are gonna bl brush this off. A lot of people are gonna go to the doctor, sadly, and it's gonna get misdiagnosed. Yeah. So you're right, dude. I mean, 
Fuck. There's got it. Yeah, man. This is like, I have a feeling this is my opinion. Yeah. And again, you and I are probably biased because it happened to us. But honestly, to me, this seems like the equivalent of like the concussion shit going on in the NFL. Somebody's already, somebody's already, a couple guys have already kind of said that to me. It's the same kind of thing where like all this shit started to fucking add up, you know? There's going to, there's going to have to be some protocols and, you know, from a a legal liability standpoint, gym owners are going to have to be aware because I'll tell you right now, there are families right now who are suffering because of that so gym out. and these, yeah. these gym owners are lucky that these people haven't sued these gym owners. Mostly the reason they haven't sued them is because these people look at their gym uh, owners as family. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this is going to happen to one of those fucking guys that comes in for like the two month special. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, I know. I know. I trust you're me. Right. You're totally right, dude. I mean, you're really looking down the chessboard on this because yeah, I mean, this whole thing's so fucking mind blowing to me. I mean, it's such a relief, dude. I was like fucking so freaked out. Like, I'm like, what the fuck's going on with me? Why am I always like lightheaded and shit? And dude, if you can't stand up and get down, you can't wrestle anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? Because wrestling's like, it's three dimensional. I'm standing as much as I am on the ground. It's brutal. It's brutal. So, so yeah, man. Wow. Well, I just, dude. I again, I just gotta. I'm not wearing a hat, but if I had one, I'd take it off for you. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Dude, like, uh, th- what you're doing is fucking brilliant. Please just, if I can help or whatever, just do anything I can do, man. You're trust me, you're on my radar. All every you and everybody else, and it's, expanded to grappling. It ain't just BJJ. I swear. Oh no, trust me, you're right. I, I look at grappling and BJJ as kind of the same thing you know what i mean same family it's different but it's i just don't want any of those nogi guys not getting the information because it's i mean dude i'm like yeah that shit fucked me up dude i mean it was so like dude when my my wife when that fucking vascular surgeon's like rattling off the shit me and my wife were like 10 years ago yeah that's what fucking happened like i mean it was like a light went off and then when i i'm still googling this because i'm like you know, I'm Googling like carotid artery because I only got one. And I'm like, what the fuck happens now? Like there's nobody, there's not a lot of fucking information out there for people like me that have one fucking carotid. Like, you know, it's like, I'm gonna find, I, you know, I'm everything a- you find on the forums is just like, oh, well just relax. And you, you know, like don't do anything great. And I'm like, I am not a relaxed person. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a person that's very active and I like to do crazy shit. And yeah. like, I need to find somebody else who's fucking done that. And, and been successful and stuff. Cause you know, like you, I got to live, you know, another 15, 20 years minimum, <laughs> you know? So it's like, <laughs> I mean, you feel me, dude. It's I know, like, I, I, 100%. It's a up situation. I'm going to dig, I'm going to dig into my notes for you, Jake, and, um, just make sure that I haven't missed, um, Anything. Just do whatever, man. You're killing it, dude. Like, just <laughs> fuck, man. I just, I wish I had money right now because I'd put it all into like uh, Google Ads for your fucking article. I appreciate <laughs> it. Well, I'll tell you what. We're we're gonna in, in the future. We'll figure out a way to do the fundraiser, you know, so we can all get this off the ground. We'll have a big party and get like one of those ribbons so people can put in their fucking profiles and shit, you know, or something. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I was gonna do that. I was gonna do. Uh, get some um I'm, I'm in the process of making uh posters for the gyms so that you know people can you know contribute buy a poster for like 25 bucks put it give it to their gym you know i mean there's a lot of gyms in there that need it i'm gonna make it you know grappling and jiu-jitsu you know specific um and then i'm lo- i'm working on doing a documentary so i think nice. you, i mean dude you're gonna that will be huge yeah there's that that will that will bring awareness because people will watch it and then there will be other people interested in it, not just jujitsu people, but the medical people will be very interested in it as well. Great. And so I've already started like working on the uh, script. I've got two guys. That's awesome. Yeah. So we're, we're in the process and, and right now I'm just gathering, like you said, the puzzles and all the people that I need to know about and, you know, Thank you for, especially this month in Stroke Awareness Month. I don't know if you know or not, but 
Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I guess I should know that shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. May May is your month that um, I'll get you. Uh, I've got a little uh, like a little picture of a jujitsu belt. It's red. It says you know survivor on it. I'll send that okay. over to you, man. And, Thanks. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll stay in touch. I'll be I'll be coming out to Colorado and we'll we'll hang out for sure. And oh, nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got I I know all the grappling people out here. I was like I was freaked out. Fucking Rose Namajunas uh, fucking added me on her on Instagram. I got like nobody following me. Like fucking Rose Namajunas follows me. I'm she's like, from oh, she's from Milwaukee. Oh, is she? Yeah, she she trained at Duke. And she came to Duke Rufus right after I left Duke Rufus. Yeah. Oh fuck! Yeah, small world, dude. It is a small yeah, world. Yeah, my one of my college roommates. So I told you the one beat my ass in judo when I was in college. It <laughs> got me really back into the grappling thing. And then um, my other one, yeah, I think he's a black belt in judo now. But I think he was inspired by me and my other roommate. But he's um he's at uh, University of Wisconsin Madison. He's oh. a fucking neurosurgeon, dude. Is he tra- is he training out there? I, dude, I have you know I've kind of fallen out of touch with him, but I'll. I'll actually. This would be a great excuse to fucking ping him. Yeah, man. Because uh, I'm all, I'm all, I'm always out in the Madison area, and then I, I'm the coach at Marquette University. So uh, okay, we we travel out to Madison to train jujitsu with people from Madison. So dude, this guy's the head. Of, like he's a big fucking wig now in the neurosurgeon shit. Like he's a, yeah. like a fucking like a brainiac guy. Dude. Yeah, dude. So he'd probably be good for you to know. Absolutely. Yeah. Put us in touch. That would be great, man. All right, yeah, this would be a great excuse. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Cool. All Dude, right, Jake. thanks again, man. Yeah, man I really thank appreciate you. just not the convers the conversation was wonderful because again it like was like oh fuck somebody else to talk to that actually had this happen to him. Yeah, brother. But uh, thank you too for the article, dude. Like, appreciate fuck, it. Man, it changed my life. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, brother. All right. All right well, let's talk soon. Let me know if I can do anything. Okay. I will be in touch. Thanks, Jake. All right. Thanks, sir. Bye. All right, take care.